Al-Murajat, a Shi-Sunni dialogue, by Sayyid Abdul Hussein Sharafuddin Al-Musawi, translated by Yasin T. al Jibouri. 60. Al-Kama ibn Qais ibn Abdullah al-Nakhi Abu Shibil. He is uncle of Al-Aswad and Ibrahim, sons of Yazid. He is also a follower of the progeny of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Shihristani in his Al-Milal wa Nihal has included him among Shia nobility. He is master among the traditionists mentioned by Abu Ishaq al-Jawzjani, who spitefully says, There has been a group of people among the residents of Kufa whose sect of Shiism is not appreciated. They are the masters among Kufi traditionists. al kama and his brother Ali have been companions of Ali alayhi salam. They have both participated in Safin where Ali was martyred. The latter used to be called Abu Salat, man of the prayers, due to his quite frequent prayers. al kama drenched his sword with the blood of the oppressive gang. His foot slid, yet he continued to wage jihad in the way of Allah, remaining an enemy of Muawiyah till his death. Abu Barda included al kamas name among the emissary to Muawiyah during the Latin's reign, but al kama objected, and even wrote to Abu Barda saying, Please remove my name from the list. Please do remove it. This is recorded by Ibn Sa'ad in his biography of al kama on page 57, volume 6 of his Tabakat. al kamas fair-mindedness and prestige among Sunnis is undisputed in spite of their knowledge of his Shia beliefs. Authors of the six Sahih books, as well as others, have all relied on his authority. Refer to his hadith in Muslim and Bukhari from Ibn Mas'ud, Abu Darda'a and Aisha. His hadith about Uthman and Abu Mas'ud is recorded in Muslim Sahih. In both Sahih books, his hadith is narrated by his nephew, Ibrahim al-Naqi, in Muslim Sahih. His hadith is transmitted by Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid, Ibrahim ibn Yazid, and Al Sha'bi. He died, may Allah have mercy on his soul, in 62 AH in Kufa. 61. Ali ibn Badima. Al Sha'bi mentions him in his Al Mizan, quoting Ahmad ibn Hanbal, saying, He has reported authentic ahadith that he is a pioneer of Shi'ism, that Ibn Ma'in has trusted him that he narrates hadith from Makrimah and others, and that both Shu'ba and Mu'ammar have learned hadith from him. He marks his name to indicate that the authors of the Sunan have all quoted his hadith. 62. Ali ibn al-Jad. He is Abu Hassan al-Jawhari al-Baghdadi, a slave of Banu Hashim, one of al-Bukhari's mentors. He is included by Qutayba among notable Shias in his book al Ma'ar. His biography in Al-Mizan indicates that for 60 years, Ali used to fast every other day. al Qaisarani mentions him in his book Al-Jami Bayana Rijalul Sahihain, stating that Al-Bukhari alone has narrated 12,000 ahadith reported by Ali ibn Al-Jad. He died in 203 at the age of 96. 63. Ali ibn Zayd. His full name is Ali ibn Zayd ibn Abdullah ibn Zuhair ibn Abu Malika ibn Jad'an Abu al-Hassan al-Qarashi al-Taymi al-Basri. Ahmed al-Ajli has mentioned him saying that the man follows the Shia school of Muslim law. Yazid ibn Zari has said that Ali ibn Yazid has been a Rafidi. In spite of all this, the learned scholars among the Tabi'in, such as Shu'ba, Abdul Warith, and many of their peers have all quoted his hadith. He is one of the three jurists from whom Basra has acquired fame. The others are Qatada and Ash'ath al-Hadani. They were all blind. When al-Hassan al-Basri died, they suggested to Ali to take his place due to his accomplishments. He was so prestigious that only renowned dignitaries were his companions, something not too many Shias could enjoy during those days. al Thabi has mentioned him in his Al-Mizan stating the above facts about him. In his book, Al-Jami Bayan Rijal Al-Sahihain, Al-Qaisarani states his biography and says that Muslim has quoted his hadith 
as reported by Thabid al Banani, and that he has learned about jihad from Anas ibn Malik. He died, may Allah have mercy on him, in 131 AH. 64. Ali ibn Saleh. He is brother of Al Hassan ibn Saleh. We have already said a word about his virtues when we recounted the biography of his brother Al Hassan. He is one of the early Shia scholars, just like his brother. In his chapter on sales, Muslim relies on his authority. Ali ibn Saleh has reported hadith from Salame ibn Khahil, while Waqi has quoted him. They too are both Shias. He was born, may Allah be merciful unto his soul and his twin brother Al Hassan, in 100 AH, and he died in 151 AH. 65. Ali ibn Gurab Abu Yahya al Fazari al Kufi. Ibn Hayyan has described him as an extremist Shia. Probably for this reason, al Jawzani drops him completely. Abu Dawood has said that Ali's hadith has been rejected, while both Ibn Ma'in and al Qutni trust him. Abu Hatim has said that there is nothing wrong with his hadith. Abu Zara says he considers him truthful. Ahmed ibn Hanbal says, I find him quite truthful. Ibn Ma'in describes him as the poor man, the man of the truth, while al Thabi mentions him in his Al-Mizan, quoting both pros and cons regarding his hadith, as mentioned above, and marking his name with SQ to identify which authors of the Sunan rely on his authority. He reports hadith from Hisham ibn Urwa and Abdullah ibn Umar. On page 273, Volume 6 of his Tabakat, Ibn Sa'ad says the following about him. Ismail ibn Raja quotes his hadith regarding what Al-Amash had said about Uthman. He died, may Allah have mercy on his soul, in Kufa, in early Rabiul Awwal, 184, during Harun's regime. 66. Ali ibn Qadim, Abu Hassan, Al Khuzai Al Kufi. He is mentor of Ahmed ibn Al Furad, Yaqub Al Qaswi, and a group of their peers who have all learned hadith from him and rely on his authority. Ibn Sa'ad mentions him on page 282, volume 6 of his Tabakat, and describes him as an extremist Shia. Probably for this reason alone that Yahya regards his hadith as weak. Abu Hatim says that he is truthful. Al Thabi mentions him in his Al Mizan, quoting the above stated views about him and marking his name to indicate that Abu Dawood and Al Tirmidhi have both quoted his hadith. His hadith is recorded in their books from Sa'id ibn Abu Urwa and Qatar. He died, may Allah be merciful unto his soul, in 213 AH, during Al Ma'mun's regime. 67. Ali ibn al Munthir al Taraifi. He is professor of al Tirmidhi, al Nisa'i, ibn Sa'id, Abdul Rahman ibn Abu Hadim, and other peers who all have learned hadith from him and rely on his authority. Al Thabi mentions him in his al Mizan, marking his name with TSQ as an indication of which authors of the Sunan quote his hadith. He quotes the following from Al Nisa'i Ali ibn Al Munsir is a staunch Shia, very trustworthy. He states that Ibn Hatim has said that the man is truthful and trustworthy, and that he reports hadith from Fudel ibn Aina and Al Walid ibn Muslim. Al Nisa'i testifies to the fact that he is a staunch Shia, and that he relies on his hadith, which is recorded in both Sahih books. This indeed provides food for thought for those who cast doubt about his reliability. Al Munthir, may Allah be merciful unto his soul, died in 256 AH. 68. Ali ibn al Hashim ibn al Barid, Abu Hassan al Kufi al Khazaz al Aif. He is one of Imam Ahmed's mentors. Abu Dawood mentions him and describes him as a well ascertained Shia. Ibn Haban says that he is a Shia extremist. 
Ja'far ibn Alban says, I have heard Ibn Namir say that Ali ibn Hashim is extremist in his Shia beliefs. Al-Bukhari has said that both Ali ibn Hashim and his father are overzealous in their Shia beliefs. Probably for this reason, Al-Bukhari has rejected his hadith, but all other five authors of the Sahih books have relied on his authority. Ibn Ma'in and others have trusted him, while Abu Dawood has included him among the most reliable traditionists. Abu Zara has said that he is truthful, and Al-Nisa'i has stated that there is nothing wrong with his hadith. Al-Fa'bi mentions him in his Al-Mizan, quoting what we have already cited above. Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, in a chapter dealing with Ali's character in his own Dariq, History, Volume 12, page 116, quotes Muhammad ibn Suleiman al bakhindi saying that Ali ibn Hatim ibn al-Barid is truthful, a man who used to follow Shi'ism. He also quotes Muhammad ibn Ali al-Ajri, saying, Once I asked Abu Dawood about Ali ibn Hashim ibn al-Barid, he suggested that I should ask Isa ibn Yunus. The latter said, he belongs to those who call for Shiism. All of this is true. He also quotes al Jozjani saying that Hisham ibn Barid and his son, Ali ibn Hashim, are extremists in their corrupt sect. In spite of all this, authors of the five Sahih books rely on Ali ibn Hashim, refer to his hadith about marriage in Muslim Sahih, as reported by Hisham ibn Urwa, and in his chapter dealing with seeking permission, as transmitted from Talha ibn Yahya, his hadith in Muslim Sahih is transmitted by Abu Muammar, Ismail ibn Ibrahim, and Abdullah ibn Alban. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, too, has reported his hadith, in addition to both sons of Shaybah, and a group of their class of reporters whose mentor was none other than Ali ibn Hashim. al Sabi says, he died, may Allah have mercy on his soul, in 181 AH, adding, his death is probably the earliest of those of Imam Ahmed's mentors. 69. Ammar ibn Zuraik al Gufi. A Sulaimani calls him Rafidi, as al Thabi states while discussing Ammar in his al Mizan. In spite of this allegation, Muslim, Abu Dawood, and al Nisa'i rely on his authority. Refer to his hadith in Muslim Sahih as transmitted by al Amash, Abu Ishaq, al Subai, Mansur, and Abdullah ibn Isa. His hadith is reported in Muslim Sahih by Abu Jawab, Abu Hawas Salam, Ibn Ahmed al Zubairi, and Yahya ibn Adam. 70. Ammar ibn Muawiyah or Ibn Abu Muawiyah. He is also called Khabab or Ibn Saleh al Dihmi al Bijli al Kufi, Abu Muawiyah. He is one of the Shia heroes who suffered a great deal of persecution while defending Muhammad's progeny, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, so much so that Bishr ibn Marwan cut off his hamstrings only because he was a Shia. He is a mentor of both Sufyans in addition to Shu'ba, Shariq, and Al-Abar, who have all learned hadith from him and relied on his authority. Ahmed ibn Ma'in, Abu Hatim, and other people have also relied on his authority. Muslim and four authors of Sunan have quoted his hadith. al Thabi has included his biography in his own Al-Mizan and quoted the views stated above regarding his being a Shia and a trustworthy traditionist, adding that nobody has spoken ill of him except Al-Aqili, and that there was no fault in him other than his being a Shia. Refer to his hadith about the pilgrimage in Muslim Sahih from Abu Zubair. He died in 133. May Allah have mercy on his soul.